I just flew down this morning. Oops. I, I got it. <laughs> All right, we are now joined by North Carolina head coach Hubert Davis. Before we begin, just a reminder to everybody that uh, raise your hand before asking a question and please state your name and affiliation. For those of you joining us on Zoom, please use the raise hand function and we'll get to your questions once we finish questions here in the room. And a final reminder, recording the press conferences on cell phones and cameras are prohibited. All right, we'll jump right into questions for Coach Davis. Let's start in the back. Coach Ryan Hennessy, NBC 13 in Birmingham. When you think of Alabama, a lot of people think of their football program, but basketball is really starting to roll since Nate Oates has been here. What is your take on it when you look from afar? And I know you played them in the past and now at their Sweet 16 again. Yeah, I mean, uh, Coach Oates has done a terrific job at Alabama. He's, he's a great coach, and, um, you know, his teams have been consistent every year, um, you know, from a defensive standpoint, tremendous athleticism. They can get steals and deflections, great rebounding team. Uh, they pressure you. They try to dictate and decide how you play on the offensive end. And then from an offensive standpoint, it's – straightforward and clear you know they're trying to get threes layups and dunks and free throws and they've got the personnel to be able to do a great guard play um size at you know at, at at the four and the five positions that that can shoot threes and can finish around the basket so they propose a lot of problems and challenges for you you know but we're really excited about the challenge of playing them tomorrow night right there second row uh, coach, um, what, do, what are the keys for your team to win tomorrow as you see it? Well, I mean, all year we've identified what allows us to have success, whomever we play. Um, we've got to get after it on the defensive end, and all year consistently we, we've been a really good defensive team. Uh, we've got to rebound the basketball. Prior to Michigan State in our last game, we had out-rebounded um, our opponent 25 straight games and so we got to get back to that we got to dominate the boards and then taking care of the basketball on the offensive end and and and, and really that's two parts one obviously limiting turnovers but two our shot selection has to be good and I've always felt that you know your defense is really dictated by how you perform on the offensive end and if you're making shots taking good shots getting to the free throw line and taking care of the basketball um, your opponent's always going up against your set defense, and that's good news for us and bad news for whomever we play. We'll go next to Jordan over here. Hi, Jordan Mendoza, USA Today Sports. Um, you guys are one of four team, or ACC teams to make the Sweet 16, and felt like a lot of the conference got kind of like a little disrespected or not as much attention this season, but you've seen how much success um, the conference has had in the tournament. And so do you guys just feel like you guys are continuing to prove that um, it is one of the elite basketball conferences in the country? Well, I don't think we're in a position where we have to prove anything. I, I've always felt like the ACC was um, arguably the best uh, conference in college basketball. The um, uh, reason why that I believe that is for most of my life, I've been a part of this conference as a player, um, as an assistant coach for nine years, and now three as a head coach. And just, you know, the, the – the type of coaches and the programs and the consistency um, in the NCAA tournament from uh, this conference is proof on um, the quality of teams and programs that we have in this conference. We'll go next over here in the third row, the end, second row, sorry. Coach, I'm glad you mentioned you as a player because that was kind of my question. Um, I was hoping you could go back into the uh, – into the time machine to 1992 and, and tell me what you remember from playing Alabama in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, it was in, um, it was in Cincinnati, Ohio. And uh, Robert Horry and uh, Latrell Sprewell, um, Hollywood Robinson, and uh, just a really talented group and played them in the Sweet 16. And um, you know, we had to play extremely well to be able to advance um, to the Sweet 16 where we played Ohio State and, and unfortunately lost in that game. But um, much very the same than the Alabama teams and the Alabama team that we're playing now, just tremendous length, athleticism, talent, 
can score in a number of different directions, uh, can get after you defensively. But I remember, I remember that game of playing them, and I remember the game before I wanted to play really well against Alabama because the game before I was two for 17 from the field, and we almost lost to Miami of Ohio. Well, Hubert Rod Baxley, Fayetteville Observer. You always talk about guys taking advantage of opportunities, not knowing when those opportunities come, but being able to take advantage of them. What's it like for you to see guys like, like Jalen Withers and Seth Trimble take advantage of the opportunities, particularly like uh, Michigan State, like you they know, did against them? I do. I, I, I love that. And, you know, it's great for them to have that, that experience or that experience that testimony of when your number is called being ready to play. And th that's an important trait that you have to have. You know, we talk about it a lot. There's, you know, very few things that you really do have control over. You have control over, obviously, how you respond and how you react, your words and your ways, your actions, your attitudes, how hard you prepare. And when that number is called, your job and responsibility is not only to be ready, but to be at the best of your ability. And what a great example of that has been Jay Witt this past weekend in Charlotte and also all of them for the entire season, but specifically this past weekend. We're not here today without the play of you know Jay Witt and Seth and the impact plays that they have made on both ends of the floor. And that's one of the cool things about a team. It comes from different parts. Everybody can celebrate each other's success. And for us to be successful, everybody has to play their part. And Jay Witt and Seth are doing a terrific job at that. We'll go next, second row. Coach, uh, Dennis Freeman, newsforusonline.com. Uh, Coach, how is it uh, that you prepare or get your, co your players ready uh, for that moment, for a free throw at the last second or maybe the, the key jump shot? How do you? coach and get your team ready for that moment well they're 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 always ready for the moment you know at Carolina you know there's very few programs that are, are at our level and the spotlight is bright playing at North Carolina and so in those situations this is something that's not new to them it's they've lived it throughout this entire season I mean to play UConn in the garden to play in the ACC tournament final, to play Duke at Cameron, to you know, playing here in the Sweet 16 against Alabama in the NCAA tournament. This is something that our guys not only are used to or accustomed to, but it, it's a position that they want to be in. They want to be in those late game situations where not only do they have to come up with a shot or a free throw, but a rebound, a stop, um, a loose ball. Those are things that our guys enjoy being in those moments, and, and, and they look forward to them. Our next question in the back. Uh, yes, uh, Brian Peterson with AZ Desert Swarm. I don't know how much you keep track of, of former players or anything like that, but are, are you surprised at all at how well Caleb Love has played with a new program in Arizona in the Pac-12? Um, you know, I, I don't. My concern is the University of North Carolina, and so, you know, the only thing that I have on my mind is our players, our program, our university, and that's where my focus needs to be. That being said, I'm not surprised at all that uh, Caleb won Pac-12 Player of the Year and he had a successful season, and I'm very, very happy for him. We'll take our next question on Zoom. Uh, Steedham from the Associated Press. Can you hear us? There we go. There we go. Uh, yes, good afternoon, Coach. A.P. Stedham of A.P. and Kelly, as we see at Syndicated Radio. Yeah. Coach, what surprised you about your team this year on offense and defense? I don't think anything has surprised me about this team at all. Um, you know, for us, you know, offensively, we wanted to be better this year at, you know, being more efficient on the offensive end. We wanted our pace to really dictate and be our identity on the offensive end. I feel like we have in terms of the way that we transition from, from defense to offense and trying to be as fast as we can from free throw line to free throw line. 
really proud of the team and their full commitment to what uh, has allowed these guys to be successful is defending, rebounding, and taking care of the basketball. And, you know, it's just we, we clearly identified it at the beginning of the year. And, and for us to have success and, um, and we have a full commitment and buy-in by all 14 players in those areas in order to give us a chance to be really good. Do we have any other questions in the room here? Go ahead, Rocco. Hey, Hugh, Rocco Miller, Bracketeer.org. Welcome to California. Thank you. Uh, just wondering, um, I tried to look it up, didn't find the answer. So what was the last time you were part of a game, either as a coach or player, in this state? And second question is, is there a mantra as you enter Los Angeles trying to get two wins out of here? Yeah, the last time that we were here, I think it was 2015, we were playing in the Sweet 16 here against Wisconsin. And so that's the last time North Carolina was was here. And Marcus Page was a junior, and now he's on staff here. What was the second part? No, not not at all. I mean, uh, you know, once the, uh, the bracket for the NCAA tournament came out, I, I did the same thing that Coach Smith did for us when when I played at Carolina, and the same thing that Coach Williams did when he was head coach. We you know we break apart the tournament in, in parts, and I said you know as of right now we we've been invited to the Charlotte tournament, and if you know we're fortunate enough to win two games, they'll invite us to the Los Angeles tournament, and so that's what we're in now. Our focus is uh, is on on Alabama and 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 winning two games here in the Los Angeles Invitational. And if we play as well as we want to here, then we'll get invited to the Phoenix Invitational. And so that's the way that we've always approached it, and that's the way that that we've done it this year. Hi, Coach Nikki okay. K with Spectrum Networks. Yeah. Um, and speaking to your players, toughness, resilience was the words I kept hearing over and over again. Um, was there a moment this season that you knew this group had what it took to get to this point? Yeah, the uh, not necessarily in terms of getting to this point, but I knew that we would be a good team from the first time that these guys stepped foot on campus and they were together as a group. I've said this a number of times, the first time that this group all together stepped foot on campus, they had a burning desire and a commitment to being a team not just on the court, off the court. I've, I've said a number of times that, you know, if, if they're going out to dinner, the whole team goes out to dinner. Um, in our hotel, you know, we have a meeting room. The guys don't want round tables where there's, you know, seven chairs at each table. They want one big table where everybody can sit together. They just enjoy being together. They enjoy practicing and preparing together and, it has translated out there on the floor. So in terms of being here and what our record was, that wasn't something that I anticipated, but I knew that we had a chance to be a really good team by their commitment to wanting to be a team uh, the first time that they got together last summer. Do we have any other questions here in the room? You can ask my youngest son a question if you want to. <laughs> he says he can handle the heat. Do we have any questions on Zoom? <laughs> Go ahead and use your hand. No, he said he was cold-blooded. That's what he said. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Micah. <laughs> oh, we have a question on Zoom. Let me unmute uh, uh, you. Yes, Coach. Uh, AP Stedham of AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicated Radio. Coach, what are the challenges guarding Mark Sears, and especially as a left-hander? The challenges are is he's one of the better players in the country, uh, very confident, a gifted score has the ability to score off the bounce and when the ball's not as in his hands in terms of coming off screens uh, can shoot threes I know they don't shoot a lot of middies but he's a three level score in terms of threes pull up jumpers floaters being able to get to the rim get to the free throw line and he also has a really good understanding of when to shoot and when to pass and just being able to distribute to his teammates and uh, he's really competitive, and, and as I said before, a very confident player. And uh, it will be a huge challenge for us uh, to be able to defend him tomorrow, tomorrow night. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, right thank you. Up.
Yes, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> they gave me um, a soccer jersey. Uh, who is it? The photographer for the, for the national team? Yeah, so that meant a lot because, uh, first of all, I didn't know they were going to be in Los Angeles, so that was a big surprise when you saw them in the hotel. But yeah, it meant a lot. It was cool. The GBs, that's, that's an everyday word. That's an everyday word in the household. <laughs> I don't think I've heard him say anything else about the GBs. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Press conference is over. <laughs> We gotta get Micah a name for it. I know. <laughs> Good job, Micah. All right, thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>